Welcome to Influential Agents Monthly Live Class. I am the Rook. I'm here with my queen. And today we are going to be taking a deep dive into how to build five pipelines of leads for a great 2019 year in real estate. Come on. Yes. Now be sure to share this live post with anyone that you feel could benefit from listening to this and who couldn't benefit. Just tag their name in the comments so that they can join us either now or at a later date. Yeah, guys, here at Influential Agent, it is our mission. It is our calling to help real estate agents just like you uh, reach their greatest potential through mastering uh, technology and lead generation systems. All right, guys, one of the ways we do that is through our marketing program called Sphere Influencer, and agents are seeing massive productivity coming from this program. They learn how to explode their business with a consistent and proven Sphere marketing program without feeling like they're bothering them, sending boring emails, or sounding salesy. So if you want to get more information on that, go to GetSphereInfluencer.com. Now, guys, as a reminder, we do Facebook Live classes here on this page every single month. So if you have not yet, what are you doing? Go ahead and click that like button. <laughs> and right next to the like button is the follow button. And if you click on that follow button and click see first as you're on the page right now, then the, that will force Facebook to see anytime we have an announcement about a new class. All right, well, let's let's get to it, guys. You guys ready? We got a ton of you pouring in. Let's say hi. We got Jack. What's going on, Jack? We got Misty. We got Miss McCoy. What is up? B. Oh, Amy Bemis in the house. I got Mandy. I got Chris. I got Lori. What's up? Lillian, Brian Weist. I got Miss Schmitz. Lori, Hello. Suzanne, Chris, Marilyn, Lori. I mean, the list goes on and on. I guess I can't name everybody now. We got, we got Amy <laughs> Bemis on the call today. What? How cool is that? Oh, the miss her. So, Miss <laughs> Amy, I'm like, wow. Right. We want to give a special shout out to all of our insiders and our special influencers who are on the call today. Uh, where the sphere influencers at? What's up? Hashtag I'm an influencer. Come on, let's see it in the comments. Let's get some hearts. Let's see them flying across the screen because I like <laughs> it. All right. As a last minute reminder, if you know somebody that could benefit from this, feel free to share it into a group. This is a public page or tag someone in the comments and we're going to get into some really good stuff. I'm going to share my screen. Jay, who else do we have joining us? And we got so many. We got Liz. We got Mr. Joe Newton. We got Susan coming in. We got a big Leah with a thumbs up. Do you see what I said? Do you see what I did there? Leah. I said yeah. Leah. I'm Amazing. not going to. Hey, that's a, that's a big step. Right. <laughs> Can I get a thumbs up for the big step I just made? Uh, oh, Mary with the hashtag, I'm an influencer. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh, who is ready? Who is ready to dive in? It is the end of the year. Yes, it's the end of the year. We're heading into November. Uh, it's just already upon us. We got December coming up. And one of the biggest struggles we have, and I want you to stop me when I lie, is the fact that uh, business tends to get also clogged with visiting family and holidays and you know parties and things like that and then january and february comes we're like oh i'm really full i'm way heavier and i need to start getting some leads going on <laughs> all right guys this is absolutely one of my favorite classes about how to build five pipelines of leads now what we did is condense this two-hour class into just an hour session for you guys today because you're right in the middle of building your business plans and figuring out what marketing strategies you're going to use so what better time to cover this class with you you guys so we're really excited by the end of this Facebook live session we our goal is that you have a plan in place and you have new ideas that you may not have had before including a plan of action of what you're going to do to set up your 2019 marketing plan with whatever five pipelines you choose which can be customized through this class today now, uh, we always like to do that digital download. So at the end, you are going to get a digital download link where you can go there and you're going to have access to all the slides. And we've also got some goodies for you. <laughs> I don't know why I just went we do have some goodies. That was weird. I'm sorry. I apologize. So in addition to the slides, we actually have three free guides for you at the end. We have 150 lead source guide, our business assessment guide, and also our vendor memory jogger guide. So you guys joined us on a really good day with not only the slides, some amazing content, some good company of other agents, but also three freebies. And we'll give those all to you at the end. They're a gift to those that stay the whole time and interact with us. 
Oh, we got Randall saying that Ebby Allen's in the house. What's up? Make some noise. I might be able to hear you guys are right over there. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. We are coming to you from our home office today, which is so awesome when we can be from our home office because it's convention season and we've been on the road. So to be able to do this Facebook Live from our home office is pretty awesome. Yeah. In case you guys, <laughs> yeah, you guys get to see the down and dirty of all of our surroundings. So, um, for those of you that are not familiar with us, we're just going to tell you a brief moment about ourselves. My name's Amber Esparza. I'm Jason Esparza. Also known in the training industry as The Rook. Oh, yeah. And we are national speakers and both co-founders of Influential Agent. Uh, we are both licensed real estate agents and we coach agents and offices all over the world and we take some of the great information that we mastermind with other agents, what's working, not working, and we create courses just like this for you. Yeah, we did help some people in Mexico and some in Canada. So now we can say all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If you're not already, if you're an Instagram fan, make sure you follow Influential Agent on Instagram because that's kind of where in our stories we're doing a lot of our behind the scenes stuff that's a little different than what we're doing on Facebook. So if you're an Instagram fan, head over there right now and follow Influential Agent. Yeah, that was so good. All right. So let's talk about this. They we're talking about the foundation. I know we're doing about pipelines, but what does sphere of influence have to do with this? Okay. You guys already know that uh, we've been indoctrinating you forever. And so has everyone else in the real estate industry that your sphere of influence should absolutely be the foundation to your business. Right. But there's a, but right? There's always a but. It would take 1,920 people in your METS or sphere of influence to get 320 sales per year. That source is the millionaire real estate agent. So you can see that that's a very large number. And most of us can't relate to having a sphere of 1,900 people or having 320 sales a year. Wouldn't that be a great problem to have? Right. right? <laughs> so let's kind of put it to a more realistic number. And I don't want to say realistic because hey, realistic is what you think it is, right? It's your perception. But let's let's bring it down a notch. If you had a sphere of 500, J. what could we expect here? All right, so let's go break this down. Why we say 500 is when we get to speak to all these really amazing agents across the country at high levels, their goal was always to hit that 500. Now, some of them didn't stop there. Some went on to a lot bigger sphere of influence, but at 500, um, they consider themselves recession-proof because they had a massive, awesome system to implement. So let's talk about the math in this. So if you had a, a sphere list of 500, okay, and you followed a solid marketing program to that 500 say- people. Yeah, we say solid marketing program. We don't mean that you put them on a drip email system, never talk to them again. You just expect an email to go out every once in a while. That is not a solid marketing program. You guys know that because we've covered that in other Facebook Lives. We're talking about a program like Sphere Influencer or one that you have a high touch personal relationship with your sphere. That's what we mean by solid marketing program. So if you had 500, you followed a solid marketing program, what would those numbers be? All right, well, let's take a look at this. We go after that 20%. So 20% of your sphere is definitely going to be recommending you business. 20% won't. The other 60 might if we're asking. But let's forget all that. Let's say the 20% that are truly your champions or the only ones out of that uh, sphere that referred a hot lead to you. Um, from doing my math right, what's the numbers on that? That's 100 hot leads that you're going to be getting for your business. All Hurry. right. Year. Yeah, per year, 100 hot leads per year. But let's say you're not a good people person. Let's say you're not really a, an effective closer. Let's say you can't <laughs> can't close a door. Um, and let's say I could only convert half of those people. That's like 50 sales that I would have. All right, 50 sales. Now, if the average price range in Dallas would yield me, let's say 9,000, I've gotten 450 thousand dollars in gross commission income. Can I get some? Can I get some wow faces of that's some amazing <laughs> math right there? Like whose life would be different at 450 thousand in gross commission income? I want to see it. Let me see some what? Yes. All right, so you can see why the sphere of influence truly needs to be the foundation to your business. And that obviously is your number one pipeline because you're seeing the huge potential here. But let me ask you guys a question. Do you all have 500 people in your sphere of influence? Tell me in the comments, because not a lot of people actually have 500 people in their sphere of influence. And this is why you may have the need to build multiple pipelines of leads because you're still growing your sphere of influence. Now, I do want to put something to rest. It is a myth 
that is being taught out there that your sphere should not get up over 100 people or 200 people or that if your sphere is big, you're doing it wrong. Let me just tell you guys, let me rest assured that is not true. Okay. You better get controversial on us. Yeah, I'm getting controversial on you, right? So your sphere of influence can be as big as you want it to be as long as you can still follow the formula of staying in contact. But again, we've seen a lot of top agents with five and six hundred in their sphere who have been able to stay in contact with them at a very high level to where they don't need other pipelines of leads because they're working just their sphere. It takes them the full two hours a day of lead gen just to stay in contact with their sphere when it's that big. And that's okay. But because most of us don't have spheres that big. Yeah, we got a lot of no's coming through, guys. I really appreciate your uh, open and honesty about that. So that's kind of cool. So, and also some of you are saying, no, we do have a sphere that big. If you do, you may not need to learn to build multiple pipelines. You need to learn the perfect marketing system for how to nail just the sphere of influence marketing, which you can see some of the other webinars we've done on the page about mm -hmm. that because we have before. You can also contact our office too. Sorry, my PowerPoint's going super slow today. That's all right. That's all right. Ho, oh, oh, hey. All oh. right. So you would need to build multiple pipelines of leads in order to grow your sphere because here's kind of what it looks like, you guys. It would look like sphere of influence down here at the bottom being the foundation to your business, right? And then you have other pipelines here at the top, two, three, four, and five. We'll get to what those are in a little bit. And Jay, where are... Where are where are the arrows going? Show me in the comments. What are all of these pipelines of leads leading to ultimately? Sphere of influence. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, right. <laughs> all these things that we do, all these clients that we teach, all these ideas that we're about to give you, the sole purpose of those ideas, yes, is to get business, but is to get people into your sphere. Because it's not just about, hey, I met someone at an open house and I, I got a, a lead and I got a transaction out of it. That's fantastic. But you need to take that person whose information you now have and put it into a place so you can continue to get business. This is not the, the one and done's. We don't want any holes in the foundation because if you're just getting leads to get leads to get leads, that's where that fear and anxiety comes into play. That's where we feel like I need to buy leads because they're falling out of my back end. So the, the whole purpose of why we do the other pipelines is to build that sphere bigger. Exactly. So if you already have a massive sphere, again, step back, you may not need any other pipelines. But for most of us, we need some of those other pipelines to grow the sphere bigger. So what are the other pipelines? Well, here's the cool part. We're going to give you some ideas, but you will be custom building this to the kind of pipelines that you want to have. So let me give you an example first. Everyone will have number one, meaning you're building five pipelines. So the first one is always your Jay. Oh, I'm sorry. Your sphere of influence. I didn't, I didn't I'm so sorry. I, was, I, was, I was waiting in anticipation just like, like uh... everybody else. I was right. leaning in. I was like, mm. so the first one is chosen for you guys. That is your sphere of influence. Now it's not chosen because we're just all that and we're making the choices for you. Every real estate book you ever read will tell you that your sphere of influence should be the foundation to your business. Now, before you're allowed to add any other pipelines, you need to have a quantifiable and specific plan for your sphere of influence that you can follow before adding the other pipelines. Now, if you're on the call with us and you're in the Sphere Influencer program, you already have a program. You just need to hashtag do what the calendar says, right? Do the program. For those that are not in the program, make sure you have something that is going out to them at least every two weeks. Like for example, this, excuse me, for example, these uh, 26 video emails, this is a per year, okay? So that's a video email going out every 14 days four personal contacts per year. What else do we have, Jason? We've got 12 Facebook ads going out pretty much monthly, four handwritten notes, uh, 24 interactions on the Facebook list and the VIP program set in place so that we continue to nurture. Now, Randall asked a great question. Well, how big is manageable? Well, that's the whole point, that if you have an effective system, then one of the things or one of the components is of an effective system is that it's purely scalable. So if I've got 100 people or if I've got 800 people, then as 
as long as my program is effective and scalable, it really can grow. Actually, there's no limits to how big it can grow. And that's where what's interesting in the studies, I don't want to get too off on a tangent, but in our studies of what's working, what's not working, what's somewhat working, the idea um, of stopping by someone's house physically is a fantastic idea, but is it scalable to five, six, eight hundred people? And if the answer would be no, then that component of the a marketing system would not be effective. Right. Well, and I'll tell you that it is, for example, in Sphere Influencer, if they had 500 people in the program or under, that's still manageable even for one person because we're supposed to be lead generating two to three hours a day, you guys. That's also in all the books in order to have a pipeline full of business at all times. And you could easily break it down the way the formula works to manage five to 600 people max and not have to worry about any other pipelines. Now, earlier in the slide, you saw that millionaire real estate agents could have as many as 1,900 in their sphere. But keep in mind, they have team members at that point and they're dividing up the contacts for their sphere. So all of it's scalable when you have help, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. So once you have a plan for your sphere of influence, you can add your second pipeline. But remember, are you allowed to move on before your sphere is done? No. No. Let me tell you how detrimental it is to get uh, get that shiny penny syndrome. Like, oh, I'm going to try this. How many of you done that? Like, oh, I heard a great idea. I'm going to try that. I heard this idea. I'm going to try that. I heard this idea. And all the while, while you're trying all those new ideas, you don't have time to contact your sphere of influence. You didn't have time to film that video that needed to go out to your sphere. You didn't have time to send referrals to the most important people that send you referrals. Those are the things that cannot be set to the side. So you need to make sure that there is a consistent plan for them and that you're consistently doing it before you start adding the next piece. Now, Jason, tell us why did we choose farming as number two? Okay, so when we talk about farming, uh, your sphere is going to pull you all over the planet, right? Your sphere is going to drag you out to places that maybe you don't want to go. Now, I could go on for days as far as when we should be leveraging out and how we should say no to grow our business. But when it comes to farming, when we talk about investing dollars or time, you, I you should have a place where I want my business to come from here. Here is where my ideal client is. Here is my price point. So I'm going to invest time, money, energy to this area so that I can get business come from here. Because how many of you guys, and I've said this so many times that you're like, man, I will never drive out to that place, that city. Uh, and then you're like, oh, holy crap, I got to go out to that city. I never thought I'd be going out to because our right. sphere pulled us there. But if we were focusing and farming in the area and the price points that we wanted to be in, then we would be able to say yes or no to taking something outside of our bubble. Because you all yeah. have a bubble, don't lie. <laughs> exactly. Your sphere of influence is kind of a hodgepodge of friends, family, of every price range. You've got first time home buyers in there. Maybe you have some upper bracket in there, but it's just a great hodgepodge of people that you love, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, you should set boundaries, though, of how far you'll go, like Jason was saying before you refer out. But that's your sphere of influence. It is what it is. But every other pipeline that we learn to grow should be to add people to our sphere of influence that are ideal. You notice Jason said that a second ago. And the reason we like farm farming as being a number two no-brainer for agents is, as he said, farming allows you to start steering the people that are going, growing into your sphere to your ideal price range and your ideal area of town. So as you're meeting people that are going into sphere, it's starting to mold into the areas that you actually want. Hey, can I quick see from you guys? Let me, I want to see in the chat, give me the name of a city that you never thought you'd go to that you ended up going to someplace in your sometime in your career. And you're like, oh man, I never thought I'd be going to, mm, and then I'm going there. I want to see in the comments because <laughs> That is absolutely so true is I want my business to come from here. And I love the point that you made, babe, because if you are getting business and starting to get business from your farm area, it will start to bleed into your sphere of influence. And all of a sudden you're going to look up and go, oh my gosh, my sphere is filled with my ideal price range, my, my ideal clients, because I've been focusing my efforts on doing that. Right. Hey, I do want to give a quick shout out to Jason Eunice, who just jumped on the call. He is an amazing agent that helped my daughter move in the Miami area. So if you guys are looking for an amazing agent in the Miami and surrounding areas, you need to give Jason Eunice a call. He is awesome. Thanks, Jason, for all your hard work. I got people who are going to <laughs> uh, Azel, Texas. I'm going to have to Google that later. I have no Jason, idea. Jason, am I thinking of the wrong person? Because he's like, no, I'm in Hagerston, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
I, I guess they say where he used to he'd never go. Oh, okay. Uh, Grayson well, County. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong person altogether. I'm going to have to really Google some of these places. Josephine, is that a place? <laughs> <laughs> wow that's amazing i don't know all right guys so farming is a, definitely a pipeline that you should consider so that you can start moving your sphere to a direction or adding people to i'm not saying you're replacing your friends and family what i'm saying is is that you add people to it that are in your ideal areas now with farming you've got to have a plan right we can't just say that we're going to farm so we have a plan for our sphere now the next part is let's say you chose farming now we're not saying you have to but with the example we're choosing it here we would suggest that you watch the class that we just did right jason yeah we've got all of our facebook lives up so you guys can go back and check out the farming class and realize what formulas you can use to systematically take a look and pick the right area okay perfect and it is the right jason yay <laughs> Okay, so if you were going to farm and you would go and refresh your memory by watching our last Facebook class about farming, you know that ideally you're going to send a monthly mailer. Okay, one, go watch the video, right? Because we're not just sending any mailer, right, Jason? It's very strategic. Very strategic. <laughs> Mailers count. There's a difference in what we're sending out. Please go watch that video. Yeah. And then we also suggest mirroring that with a monthly Facebook ad. Now, you are only going to farm to the subdivision that meets the criteria of the magic formula for farming, which we covered in the last class. So if you choose this as number two, make sure you go and watch that. So, but you can see it's quantifiable plan of how many mailers and how many ads we're going to do and to what subdivisions. That is an exact plan. Hey, can I help you all out real quick? Just, I'm just a side note, and, and I let me just apologize, and I'll, I'll cut into my time for my social media. Hey, we just had a whole bunch of agents list the areas they don't want to go to. How cool would it be for you to hook up with that agent and say, hey, I will be happy to take referrals. We're just creating a referral network for you guys. Can we get a big amen for that? Give us some, <laughs> some hand praise. We're just connecting hey. realtors who don't, I, would, I really don't want to go to. Is it Azel, Texas? Azel, Texas. But I would be happy to give referrals out there so I don't have to go. I'm just saying, I thought that was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. So sphere of influence is number one. Number two, we highly suggest doing a farm because imagine this, you guys, when you're spread out all over town with your sphere of influence and you've got signs all over, listings all over the place, it's hard to gain momentum because yeah. nobody's seeing your sign over and over, okay? Whereas when you're farming and you get really good at a specific area, area, the momentum starts to happen when people see your sign over and over. They start calling you versus you calling them. That's why we love farming. But notice we combined old school mailers with new school Facebook ads because the old rule of seven, how many of you have heard of that? Jason, tell them what I'm talking about. The rule of seven states that someone needs to see you seven times before they'll remember or you or take action. And guess what, you guys? That's a bunch of crap. <laughs> You guys, people are saying that in so many marketing classes. And when we went and looked up that statistic, it came out in what year, Jason? Came out in 1937 for the movie industry. Oh, my God. So we're hearing people teach stats from 1937. Do you think marketing has changed a little bit since 1937? <laughs> Absolutely. Google came out with its own study recently that it's actually 12.2 12 times. 12.2 times, yeah that somebody actually needs to see your name before purchasing. So with farming, if we're just sending monthly mailers, it could take up to a whole year to start seeing the benefits of that, which pretty much would mirror what the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book says. Having said that, if we combine it with the new school marketing of Facebook ads, we know that people open their Facebook app anywhere between eight and 14 times per day y'all. So if that's the case, you could fast forward the mailer time combined with a Facebook ad to where they've seen you a lot more often quicker. Okay, now, Sue, seeing results faster. Now, Sue just asked, uh, if she missed that video. So where would we find it? It's going to be found on this page on the left hand side of your screen under videos, but don't go there now. We're, we're in the middle of something. So just... <laughs> yeah, but you can watch it later. It was one of our uh, recent Facebook live classes. It was called the ultimate farming success formula. So make sure you guys go watch that because we really broke it down for you there. Woo. All right. So let's talk about the second 
uh, I'm sorry, the third pipeline uh, that we can tell. Let's talk about social media. Eh, wrong. We're not talking about social media. And every time I get to uh, consult with realtors and it's like, hey, what's your plan for getting leads? They always go, oh, we're going to do social media. I'm like, I don't know what that means. Uh, so what I wanted to share with you guys is simply when it comes to picking a strategy with social media, we've got to dig deeper. We can't just say social media as some ethereal thought process. So let me share with you what social media means uh, to me. Is it Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter? Is it podcasting? Are you blogging? Is it Pinterest? Is it YouTube? But wait, there's more because every single one. So Facebook strategies, is it coming from the personal page? You can do the Facebook business page strategy. Are you going to do Facebook ads? You can go Facebook live. Are you going to use Facebook stories? Whoa. How many so, of you just went, whoa? <laughs> so if we say social media, okay. If we say Facebook, getting closer, because inside of Facebook, are you going to do all five, two out of the five, three out of the five, one out of the five? When you talk about becoming an expert in something, start with just one and drill down deep. Let's move on. We got Facebook strategies. Okay, let's talk about Instagram strategies. You've got the Instagram personal page or the Instagram uh, business profile. Again, our recommendation is that you turn your personal profile into a business profile uh, because that is more effective when it comes to marketing. Uh, are you going to do Instagram ads? Are you going to go live on Instagram? Are you going to do Instagram stories? Are you going to harness the power of Instagram television or what is known as IGTV? Uh, how many of us are just overwhelmed because I'm not done yet. Let's go to LinkedIn. We've got LinkedIn personal <laughs> profile, which is about networking with professionals. You've got the business profile, which is all about following influencers and people who are interested in your business. You've got LinkedIn ads, horrible idea. Um, LinkedIn groups, you've got <laughs> LinkedIn pulse, which is LinkedIn's blog that you can contribute to that gets massive amount of exposure. You've got LinkedIn recommendations where you're writing recommendations to get recommendations and it's powerful. You've got LinkedIn video updates where you'll be uploading videos, uh, talking about your business uh, as a post. <sighs> I'm not done yet, guys. Marilyn's like, I'm overwhelmed. Are it, you guys getting the point though, that you can't just say social media because there's way too many strategies for social media i don't i don't think you're overwhelmed yet i'm gonna keep going <laughs> podcast strategies you got how-to shows talk back shows conversational product training neighborhood charity shows cause based shows what else do i have uh well, if the slide would move forward <laughs> There's so much, okay. you guys. You got Pinterest. Pinterest really doesn't have a lot of strategy. Let's get that one real quick. I've got blogging strategies, which is pretty much mirroring a podcast strategy, only it is I'm typing it. And so when we talk about I'm going to do social media rook because that's what I'm taking classes on and Pinterest strategy is just using the personal profile, the business profile, um, YouTube strategies, all these videos I could be making and putting up there. Um, I, I want to just stop and tell you guys that it's okay to just pick one. So in this scenario, I'm just gonna go with a Facebook Live strategy. And I'm gonna even give you that strategy. So if you guys wanna do that one, that's fantastic. But um, we're not saying that's the one they should choose, right? We're just giving you not. an example. Um, we actually love the Facebook um, personal strategy, which is already built into the Sphere Influencer program. But the point here, guys, wasn't to, to tell you that you have to do overwhelming things. Mm -mm. Our mm -mm. point of showing you all these is you can't just say social media is your strategy, okay? You've got to pick a couple of them and pick the ones that your ideal audience hangs out in, okay? Tell them what that means. Okay, so a, a very clear distinction is not where my sphere is, where my ideal client is. Your sphere is going to be taken care of with your sphere-based marketing program. Therefore, all of these other pipelines should be targeting your ideal client. So there's a massive distinction. I just want to be, be clear of that. So whatever the strategy that you're picking, make sure that you're targeting your ideal client and go where they are. So again, the Facebook Live strategy that you guys could implement um, is, is all about having a weekly show. It's all about understanding the formula to maximize it. Facebook lives best practices are a minimum of five to seven minutes. Um, and then at the end of that Facebook live strategy, you're going to have the bigger, better, faster, more call to action, which means, hey, I told you about the top uh, top 10 reasons why X, Y, and Z happens. Uh, go ahead. And if you want the download free guide for those top 10s with a two bonus, whatever, but the Facebook Live strategy that you're going to go after for one of your leads, if I'm going to choose this one, it has to align with my other pipeline. So, for example, if you take a look at the slide, we're talking about farming. 
And we're talking about farming the Star Creek subdivision and the Fountain View subdivision because that's what worked in our on our analytics when we did our formula. Therefore, my Facebook lives should not be about five ideas for increasing your curb appeal unless I'm going to do a Facebook live about the five ideas to increase your curb appeal in Star Creek. All right, we've got some people that are extremely overwhelmed and say that they're drowning. Hey guys, we understand this is not a how-to on Facebook Live. This is just an overview of how you would build five pipelines of leads. And even if you feel overwhelmed, stick with us because I promise by the end, it's going to make sense to you. And then based on the five that you choose, you will be able to take classes on those to individually know how to rock them. Okay, so if you're feeling overwhelmed, just hold tight, stick with us. We're just using... Uh, what if examples, okay? So as you're building your business plan, we know sphere of influence is already chosen for you, but the other four are up to you. We're just giving you certain examples. I guess the whole point of me saying that was simply that you don't need another class on another social media channel. Pick a strategy that exists inside of the channel where your ideal clients are and just knock it out of the park. If you wanna do Instagram stories, you be the best Instagram stories and the only classes, the only material you're reading is to get better at Instagram stories or whatever strategy you pick. All right, so let's say you decided to do sphere of influence, farming, maybe a Facebook Live or maybe blogging. I mean, you guys get to choose what you want, but I'm giving you another example. So many of you, tell me in the comments, how many of you raise your hand with the emoji or say me in the comments, use open houses as one of your lead sources. Okay, how many of you are doing open houses as one of your lead sources? I kind of chose this one because it's pretty common for a lot of agents to do that. So I'll wait to hear from you in the comments. But if you're choosing open houses as one of your pipelines of leads, then you got to get specific with it. For example, if you just plan to say, well, I'm going to do open houses and that's how I'm going to get some neat new sphere of influence. Okay, the, the comments are coming in. Lots of, a lot of people. There we go. Okay. Here <laughs> so we go. If you're doing open houses, you can't just say open houses is one of my lead sources. You have to have something quantifiable for 2019 as a plan for open houses. So for example, if you're going to do open houses and you only did one a month, I'm going to tell you right now, open houses is for sure a numbers game and you're not going to see a lot of business coming from that. Whereas if you committed to do one a week or four per month, maybe better odds there, right? For example, my first year, I did two open houses per week and I got 12 sales my first year from open houses only, okay? But that's because I was doing a lot of them. I was doing eight to 10 open houses per month and meeting new people. But it's not just good enough to say how many open houses you're going to do. You're going to then set a target that it's not just random open houses because somebody needed help at theirs or because I have a listing out in the middle of nowhere. It's going to be open houses that are in my ideal want zone. So I'm going to pick a price range that's my ideal. Now, it doesn't have to be the one that's on the screen doesn't mean it's yours. I'm giving you an example. Okay, my ideal price range was the move up price range. Okay, so 400 to 600, pick a location. You really want to start being seen as the expert in a certain area. So pick an area where you're going to do predominantly most of open houses. If you don't have a listing there, borrow someone else's. A lot of times they need someone to hold open houses for them. Look at uh, the seven step advertising. Um, I'm not saying there's seven exact steps. I'm saying what is your preparation checklist to drive the maximum amount of traffic to an open house? Now, the reason why I said seven steps is because the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book had a whole section on the seven things you would do to advertise an open house. And I believe there's some more updated content that you could follow there to really help drive traffic. But you decide what that checklist is and make sure it's a part of your action plan. And then make sure you have a follow-up. Why is follow-up so important? As look, 80% of the sales that happen in our industry happen somewhere between the fifth and 12th contact. So when oh, we say that again, say that again. 80% of the sales that happen inside of real estate happen between the fifth and 12th contact, the fifth and 12th. 12 time that you go after someone. So why go with mediocrity? We're just going to scrape 12. What are the 12 pieces of follow-up that you're going to do after your open houses? Now, it's interesting because we got a lot of people that are like, man, yeah, that's, that's like uh, saying that's a lot. You did like two a week. Um, did you have a life? And I, that's a lot. What, what would you say to that, Ben? 
it was a lot. <laughs> but to me, if I my sphere of influence was really small, I was only 100 people my first year, I needed to do extreme things to grow my sphere of influence. Okay, so um, to me, open houses were free. And I knew that if nobody came in, I could be lead generating during my open house. So it wasn't a waste of time for me to sit there. I would lead generate if no one was there. So it, it's just strictly a matter of your personality style. But no matter what it is, it's it's quantity. OK, you have to like, for example, if you're doing an open house, how many of you can relate to this? You did an open house on like no one comes or one or two people come. That would happen to me all the time. And yet if you hold a certain number open, it would be, I could do like three or four open houses and have no leads, no good people to add to my sphere of influence. And yet that fourth open house or fifth open house that month, just boom, that's when it happened. Somebody came in. So if you don't stay consistent with that plan, how do you, how do you expect to meet a lot of people? Because it's not all going to happen on one. You don't know when it's going to happen. Plus I'm going to be honest with you after an open house, I would follow up three times. Okay. Well, we found out less than 12% of agents are even following up three times, right? So right. guess what? 48% of agents don't even follow up a one time after an open house, right? <laughs> so if they, I would try three times and if they, if they didn't call back or text back or reply back by the third time, I'd throw away that lead or the, meaning whoever signed in at the open house, and I'd move on to the next lead. Well, it turns out I was missing out on some huge amount of business because turns out people look at open houses way before it's time to look in a lot of cases. And like Jason said, 80% of all transactions happen between the fifth and 12th contact. So if I would have just kept going, imagine the results I could have seen even better than what I already got. Well, I think that you hit the nail on the head and, I, and people are seeing the comment. It's consistency. It's it's setting a number that you're going to do. But if we're just doing open houses every once in a while and we're not seeing results, I absolutely can understand how discouraging that might get. But when we can put it into just data and numbers and I'm going to do one a month or two a month um, or three a month. Or let's say I do I do four a month, but I do every other weekend. So I do two on one weekend, skip a weekend. So I'm going to have that family time. Whatever the plan is, have one. Right. But sporadic open houses spread across sporadic price points, spread across sporadic cities is, is not, not going to get the impact that you want to make. Yeah. Now, I will say, don't feel like you're stuck to do an open house on a Saturday or Sunday. Now, that is that is when I did the majority of mine. But I will say it should mat, it should depend on that where the house is located. So, for example, if I had a house that was located next to a uh, right next to an elementary school that had tons of traffic during the drop off or pickup time in the afternoon of the kids from school, that pickup time is the ideal time to have that open house because thousands of cars are going by your sign versus trying to wait till the weekend. Okay. So if there was a house uh, by a soccer field, well, almost all those soccer games were happening on Saturday morning. So I would hold it open on a Saturday morning when thousands of cars are coming and going to those soccer games. So really look at the time you're holding your open house and make sure it complements the house that you're holding open and when the most traffic is coming and going. Uh, the last idea there on time was I actually didn't do this myself. I uh, suggested this to a coaching client of mine. He was uh, very easily distracted at the office. And he's like, when I'm at the office, I get distracted. I stop lead generating. I start talking to people, but I can't work from home. But I really don't want to pay to rent an office right now when I'm not making the kind of money I need to make. So I suggested that he find a vacant house that's in his ideal price range that's for sale and in his ideal area and ask the builder if he could hold that home open every single day. <laughs> so he basically turned that house into his office. Okay. It was like an open house all day. Now I'm not going to lie to you. Hardly anybody came in ever, but he had a beautiful office for free with zero distractions where he got lead generation done every day, all day. Cause there was nothing else for him to do there. And after doing this for a full 30 days, he said, Amber, I have had zero leads walk into here after 30 days, but I can tell you, I have more business than I've ever had because I've been lead generating. There's nothing else for me to do here. <laughs> so it's nice, okay. Nice. And then I remember he called me a week after that. And he says, Amber, you're not going to believe it. You know how I didn't have anybody. He said, somebody walked in, loved the house. They wanted to buy this house. How often does that happen, right? It was a $600,000 listing and they needed to sell their $400,000 house first. So we got a million dollars in production by just sitting there rent-free 
getting lots of lead gen done. So think outside the box and make it a quantifiable plan. We're about to have like 37 builders going, what are you telling people? I got 85 agents <laughs> calling me, wanting to list my houses or whatever. Hey, that's a cheap, gorgeous right? office. You hey. know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's all about finding a need and filling it, that you've got builders who would love to hold, hold their models open, but you can't just walk in there off the street and say, hey, I want to do this. You've got to establish a relationship work. Hopefully that should go without saying. I'm just saying, I think that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, right. And this house was actually already listed by another agent, but he got the agent and the builder's permission because the agent couldn't sit on it all day. So they're like, heck yeah, for sure. Why not let more people see it, right? Just make sure you get permission in writing so that you're covered there, uh, that you did have permission to hold it open. All right, there's so many different ways that you could um, really convert well on an open house. This is not an open house class though. So we're going to continue going. We're just giving you some different ideas of different pipelines of leads. So, so far we have built four in this example. Oh, but real quick, how many guys would like to see a Facebook Live about open houses, the ins and outs, the marketing genius that we've got? Let me see in the comments. Who wants to see it? Give me some hearts to see if you want to see the open house deep dive Facebook Live class. You, you mean another time. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> so the last one that we have an example of is vendors. Now, don't fret. We have a ton of ideas for you. This is just the last one on the screen is vendors. So how many of you guys have built a vendor list and what does that mean jay like me on a spreadsheet okay so if we're taking a look at vendors it is the people that are connected not just to our industry but to any involvement of owning a house it is as someone who can uh what's the word i'm looking for someone who can benefit from getting leads yeah and the thing is, is most agents are currently building a list of vendors so that they know who to refer their clients to, but we are missing out. We don't just want to build a list for that reason, which it is good to have that, right, you guys? But we also want to have a list of vendors because those vendors should now become our sphere of influence. And I want you to think outside the box. I'm not just talking about the lender, the title company. I'm talking about vendors that can help your people that are not being called by 10 other realtors already. So let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Well, yeah, because vendors work hard, guys. And we definitely, they shouldn't be just there to where we just want some free stuff for them. Vendors are people too. Hashtag Tammy Virgin, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> All right. Tammy rocks. All right. So here's a list of vendors. So I'm going to admit to you that vendors was one of my personal five pipelines of leads. Now it might sound crazy, like vendors. Yeah. <laughs> We're in a unique business where we get to refer to people all the time. It's just we're not thinking outside the box. So what I did is I made a quantifiable plan, as you can see here, that I was going to add two, 10 new vendors a month to my sphere of influence. Now, the way I did that was by using something like this, which is a memory jogger. So each day during my lead generation time, I'd look at this and I'd say, A, for an accountant, who do I have that's on my sphere of influence that's an accountant? And if I don't have someone that's an account, well, first of all, I need to make sure they're on my spreadsheet so I can refer to them. But if I don't have someone, where's a good place to look for someone, Jay? Oh, let me just tell you now. So let's say you've got a whole bunch of people that you'd like to know that are profession. Well, where in the place would you find someone's profession? On LinkedIn, Letty. <laughs> Go to LinkedIn and find all the people that you're connected. <laughs> what just happened? I don't know. That was weird. I need, <laughs> you know what it is? It's the lack of coffee. I only had like one cup today. To... <laughs> so this is really just a memory jogger. Now, don't try to write all these down because I am giving you this in the handouts. But some of you are like, well, you can use my vendor list. You guys need to start your own vendor list because it's not just about referring to people. It's about making them your sphere of influence too. So if you don't have an acupuncturist, for example, example, go and find one. Now here's the cool part. All you got to do is call them up, you guys, and be like, okay, air conditioning repair. You could call them up. You don't have to beat around the bush or try to relationship build for a year. There's something in it for them too. So you can just be blunt and get to the point. Something like, hey, it's Amber and, you know, tell them what real estate company you're with. And I see that you can, you do HVAC or you do air conditioning repair, or you're a pool technician, or you're a plumber, whatever it is from this list. And my, uh, here's what I do. I, I have a lot of buyers and sellers in the North Allen area. And I noticed that that's where your business is based out of. So my question to you today is, could you benefit from more referrals? You guys, I've only had like uh, one person in my life say no, and it's because he was a fireman. 
Okay. <laughs> but, he, but he did have a wife that could benefit, wife that could benefit from referrals. So when they say, yes, I could benefit from referrals, just say, wonderful. Well, I, I have a couple of questions for you. Who's your ideal client? Okay. Uh, what's your ideal service areas? If I was to run into your ideal client, how would I know and how would I best get them to you? How would I refer them to you? And as you're asking them all these questions, you guys, the vendor starts to author the plan themselves of how you could best give them referrals. And I was always taught by my coach that when you author the plan yourself and you try to have the perfect script, it may or may not work for the vendor. But when the vendor authors the plan themselves by you just asking great questions and then they tell you it can't be wrong because they're the ones that came up with it, right? So that's the way you should go. And then you guys, by the end of the conversation, inevitably, they're saying, um, well, how much are you going to charge me for this to be on your vendor list? And it's like, oh, there's no charge. I want this to be a win-win. The only thing I would ask is that when you run into somebody that's buying or selling, that you give me a call and give me their information so I can be the ones, one of the ones that they interview for the job, okay? And you can be that blunt because it's a win-win. There's something in it for you. And all that I require is that you give really great service to the people that I recommend to you, okay? imagine how many referrals you could get because the best way you guys to get a referral what's the best way to get a referral give one give one most people will say ask well that's yeah that's a given ask <laughs> but the best way to get a referral is to give one first okay now imagine if you went through this list all year long and took one per a couple per week couple categories per week or even one a day Imagine how many referrals you could have built up by the end of the year. Even if only every five people gave you a referral, that's still a lot of transactions. And then not only are those people on your vendor list, but those vendors are now your sphere of influence for both them and the people they know that are buying or selling. And even if they know multiple agents, if you're the only one actively trying to refer to them, they'll be the ones to refer to you. That was awesome. There's uh, 90, there's like over a hundred different uh, vendors here. I'm just letting y'all know numbers wise um, that you can, and you can add some ideas. I just Absolutely. threw those I, up there. So good. But it has to be quantifiable. In other words, how many vendors am I going to try to add per month, not only to my list, but then to my sphere of influence, because if they're on my vendor list, they're also my sphere of influence now. And am I looking at it every week, that list to see who am I working with this week that I could send referrals to? Okay. And then those people become your sphere. So you automatically have a marketing plan to them because you have a marketing plan running to your sphere of influence. So it's like a two for one. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. But how, okay, how many of you guys are excited? You guys are checking this out. And could this be your plan for 2019? We've got all these different strategies laid out uh, and just, oh, man, just laying out with a plan that's that's got details. You know how I love details. So, <laughs> All right, guys. Jay. Yes. Oh, when it comes to picking your five, let's talk about that. When it comes to picking your five, you need to know the rules. Oh, we've got rules. Let's talk about them. Because, uh, <laughs> Best practices. Important. Yes. Implement one pipeline at a time. Because here's the thing. We threw out all these great ideas. And you guys are like hearts and thumbs up and wow face. You're like, man, that's amazing. I'm going to do everything. No. 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 We take the time to show all this really great stuff so that you just get frazzled. Like I'm gonna do everything or you get so terrified. And I probably lost some of y'all on the social media aspect of it. And you didn't, <laughs> yeah. hear, didn't even hear the open house of the vendor <laughs> thing because you're stuck and you don't want to move because if you move, then your brain's going to explode. Um, the whole notion was to understand that this is what makes us recession proof guys. If you want to get off that roller coaster, then let's implement strategically a plan. So when it comes to picking your five, it all starts with the sphere of influence. Okay. Um, yeah. Get that rock solid. It definitely would love to have you in the sphere of influencer program, but get something, get something in place. And to, because what you're doing is you're clogging up those holes that have existed in your sphere of influence bucket. And if there, how are you going to pour leads into this bucket and try to grow this if it's got holes in it? Exactly. And we've seen that so many times, even from top agents that'll pay us to coach them. They're, they're going after, hey, we want you to implement a new Facebook ad strategy. Well, that's wonderful. We love Facebook ads. But then when we ask them what they're doing for their sphere, 
they just have them on an automated drip system. They have no idea what's going out. They never talk to them. It's inconsistent and it's kind of a waste, you guys. So don't, don't get distracted by the shiny pennies. Although we want you to build multiple pipelines, you build them one at a time. And not only do you have to have a plan, you have to actually be executing the plan in order to add another layer so that everything doesn't get watered down. Oh, I can't just okay? like write the plan down and keep going. No, I got it. You got it. Yeah. The next rule is that all pipelines should be going after the same ideal audience. Don't be all over the place. So give us an example, Jay. Okay. Well, if you take a look back at the strategy we laid out, that if we're going to go after Star Creek, the farming year is going after Star Creek, the Facebook Lives are all about Star Creek, the open house strategies in the North Allen or Star Creek area. If the Star Creek uh, subdivision doesn't fill up enough with open houses, I'm going to go find other areas in the same price range in the kind of same general area. When it comes to the vendors, I'm only going after the vendors that service the North Allen area. And so what you've got is a consistent plan that is hard targeting every single one of your efforts because I want my business to come from here. I don't want to go to Roanoke or Azel or all these other places. I'm going to have to Google. All right. I don't want to go there. Well, if you want to stop having your business just be this ever growing circle, then we absolutely need to focus our efforts, be it time, money, energy into the areas that we truly want our business to grow in. And that's why all of these strategies have a focus. Which is really hard for a lot of agents, you guys. And I have been there. I've been guilty before where we think if we narrow down our area that we're leaving people out that we could potentially have. We think we're losing money by narrowing our area, but it's actually the exact opposite. Jason, say it with me. Uh, broad broad is, broke, is broke, niche is, is rich. rich. Okay. Broad is broke, niche is rich. The more niche you go, actually the more money you will make because you will become the expert in that area. So get on board y'all. Now let's say, um, because these can change out to whatever you guys decide they are. Let's say instead of um, open houses, let's say that was expired. Instead mm. of Facebook Live, let's say that was for sale by owners because you get to choose your categories. Well, if that's the case, the rule still applies. You're going to go after for sale by owners that are in North Allen. You're going to go after expired that are in North Allen. So no matter what areas you're in, it still has to be going after the same ideal audience. Are you guys getting what I'm putting down? Yeah. I like it. Brandon says hyper local. Absolutely. The next rule. Each pipeline must have a marketing plan that is quantifiable. Uh, McQueen said this word probably about 37 times in the past <laughs> five minutes. Sorry. So you didn't get it. So let's go again. This plan is only an idea. This is an example of what you could be doing to strategize your 2019, but take a look at it. Farming, monthly mailer, monthly Facebook ad. My Facebook live strategy is a weekly show, a minimum five to seven minutes. My open house is, I'm doing four a month. I've got a seven step advertising plan and I've got a 12 by 12 follow up plan. When it comes to vendors, I'm going to be adding 10 a month. Those are specifics. There is a plan that's laid out that I'm going to stick to because if we say words like, ah, I'm going to do open houses, but I'll probably do like do them sometimes. I, I don't understand how we can track sometimes. No, we can't. And that's not a good, that's not a business plan if it's not quantifiable. This is right here, guys, a lead generation business plan. That's what this is. Because you can do a business plan all day long that says how much gross commission income you want to have, how many listings you want to have, how many buyers you want to have. And hopefully you have that. But if you don't have a lead generation plan like this to actually make it happen, you're missing the boat. What's going to happen is you're going to make a business plan. It's going to go on a shelf. And then at the end of the year, you don't understand why you didn't make your goals again. It's because there's no lead generation plan in place to actually make it happen like this that's quantifiable and laid out and ready to lead generate too. The last, or I think this is the last rule, pick pipelines that complement your personality style. So if you know for a fact Facebook Live does not complement <laughs> your personality style or expireds, like expireds was not my personality style to cold call people I didn't know that were mad that their house expired, <laughs> okay? But other people are really good at it. So you want to pick something that's to your personality style strengths. There's no right or wrongs. Yeah, uh, knocking on doors, uh, not my strong suit, <laughs> talking to people face to face. Uh, no, that's no, I just, I got anxiety, I'm like, I'm a stress, I'm getting just stress bumps. I'm just thinking about now, There's no right or wrong answer, though. What's right or wrong is for you. Because, for example, I would walk up to top agents. We were speaking at an event and we, had, we were at a happy hour with all the other speakers. And I walked up to one and I said, Hey, do you like open houses? And he said, Complete waste of my time. 
like, geez, okay. And I walked up to another top agent. And I said, do you do open houses? She says, oh my gosh, I love them. I built my business on them. Now, was either of them right or wrong? No, it's based on their talents. He would much rather cold call 100 people and be in front of more people than sit at an open house. Whereas her personality style didn't like to cold call and she was better in person. So she was willing to take the chance at an open house. So you've got to pick ones that work well to your personality style. Nice. All right. Become an expert at whatever your pipelines are. And that's what we talked about earlier when it comes, not just with social media, with anything. Um, the, the things that we do to get better, why are you going to a, a social media class if that's not the channel nor the specific strategy inside the channel that you want to be good at? Why would you go to a class that didn't have to do with, let's say, I want to get better at open houses. Why am I going to you know go to class well, unless I have to? But what you focus on, what you really start to study you will get better at you will know so i i cannot stress enough the fact that man how many of you feel that you just get pulled in so many different directions and i gotta do this and i gotta do that um how many of all feel that right now and especially no i want to i'm gonna see from you guys it's the end of the year and and all those things of 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 where does our brain tend to go and just to be honest with you guys my brain tends to go to what i haven't done what I haven't accomplished, what I haven't done. I, I want to help dig you guys out of that hole because that's a dark pit to get into. So just focus on these really wonderful things that are going to help your business and kind of block everything else out because when you can truly become passionate about open houses, you'll love them if that's what you're going to choose. If you get, I'm, I'm man, Rook, I'm really not good with video, but I want to do Facebook Lives and pour your heart into Facebook Lives and I promise you, your Facebook Lives probably will suck, but they'll get so much better after that <laughs> because you will keep doing. So I want to encourage you guys that you, who cares that it's the end of the year. It's not your last year. Yeah. So you got that next year. That's what we're planning for. I'll empower you guys. Come on. Now I'm preaching to you guys. Let me get, uh, let me get some hands up saying <laughs> amen because I want you guys to just drill down deep. Don't try to go too uh, wide with this. Just mm, nail it. Yeah, I know we keep saying open houses, but that's because it's one of our examples. We don't care if you choose open houses or if you choose something else. But even when it comes to open houses, you guys, some people are like, well, I don't need to take a class about that because it's, I've done like 25 of them. I'm pretty sure I got it down. But do you? Because unless you're getting a lot of information, unless you know that even if they're not buying or selling and it's a looky-loo neighbor, that there's an opportunity there to add them to your sphere? Do you have the right scripts to be able to get their information to add them to your sphere, even though they're not a current buyer or seller? And unless you can say that you're getting active leads and adding people to your sphere from open houses, then you could still benefit from going to open house classes, okay? So no matter what it is, drill down, okay? And you'll just get better and better and better, no matter how long you have been in the industry. So our question to you as we wrap it up today is what is your plan for 2019 when it comes to your five pipelines of leads? Number one is already done for you. That is your sphere of influence. And again, if you're in sphere influence or you've already got a plan, if you're not, contact our office at support at influentialagent.com. We'll help you with that. But what are your other pipelines? Start thinking now so that January 1, you can start with those other pipelines, okay? We think that farming should be number two. We really think that's important. But when it comes to all the rest, choose them based on your personality style, okay? And only implement one at a time. All right, so we got some gift for you guys. We got the 150 lead sources guide that's going to help you figure out what are the lead sources that I want to pick. Um, we gave you just a couple, but inside of this book, you got 150 more. That you yeah, because we don't want you to think the ones that we picked are the ones that we think you should have. We just kind of randomly draw out of a hat kind of a deal, put some up there uh, because we think you should pick the ones that your personality style. So go over this 150 lead source guide that we're going to include in your handout and just start to look through there about, hey, what are some ideas that I think I would like to try and to take some classes on and start building your five the way that you want to build them custom for you. All right, you guys, the next class is on December 12th. So mark your calendar now to join us live December 12th. And we want to hear from you guys. What do you want the next class to be about? We really heavily rely on what you guys want to learn. If you guys haven't already for behind the scenes look at what we do here, go ahead and make sure you follow us on Instagram at influential agent and i want to ask something before we give you the digital download 
did you get something out of today's class? Were you able to walk away with something? Is 2019 just a little less scary for it? But, but if you've got something, then we always like to ask that you just pay it forward. Go ahead and tag an agent that you know needs to hear this message going into next year because they've been stressed out and talking to you about it. Or if you know someone who's like, man, you need to, you definitely need to get this. Um, <laughs> go ahead and put, tag their name because we keep these videos up, but I don't know how many people see them. So definitely help us out with that. Go ahead and tag that agent that's like, look, I want to help your business. You mean a lot to me, brother. You mean a lot to me, sister. Go ahead and tag their name down below so they have the opportunity to watch this video and hopefully, man, make their life a little less stressful in 2019. It's all right. Okay, guys, in addition to the slides and the 150 lead source idea, I wanted you to know the other two handouts that are in there. There is a business assessment. Now, before you start to build your business plan for your five pipelines of leads, I want you to take this business assessment. Now, what this is doing is tracking for the last 12 months, or you could do for 2017, how many listings did you take, how many buyers, how many closed, what's your conversion rate, your average sales price, and then go through and track out of all the listings I closed, where did they come from? Was it Sphere? Was it an open house? Was it direct mail? Was it a sign call? And really, it's important to assess what's working and not working in your business before you go and decide what you will and won't do for your five pipelines, okay? It's really important to see where you have been, what's working and not working. And then lastly, we did include the memory jogger for the vendors so that you guys could see that list. And if you wanted to choose vendors as one of your categories, we wanted to make it easy for you to have some to go after. Woo, you guys ready for the handout? Uh, give me some hearts. I want to see who's ready. Come on, flood the screen. <laughs> that heart button like 75 times. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all you guys have to do is go to fivepipelines.com. That's fivepipelines.com. It's not case sensitive, but you do have to put the number five, not the letters. Fivepipelines.com. What are they going to see when they get there? Well, when you guys go there, it's going to be a screen that's got the first slide up and it's going to ask you for your name and your email address. And we need that email address because that email address is going to be then given permission to access a Google folder. And inside of that Google folder is all the free stuff. So when you put your email address, it'll automatically send you out access to the Google folder. Um, if you don't see it right away, then you should uh, go check your spam. But if you still don't see it, then please reach out to Facebook.com com slash influential agent which is the page you're on right now and send us a message uh the office manager Bapasha the great right behind me oh wave to the Mapasha um <laughs> she will get you guys taken care of uh and and get that out to you if you don't see it right away okay you guys I want to encourage you that 2019 can be your best year yet make sure before the end of the year you have solidified your sphere of influence plan over anything else and then you can decide what your other five pipelines are go ahead and decide what the five will be but you're only going to implement them one at a time because remember if you try to do all five at once they're going to get watered down and you won't do any of them at a high level so even though you can pick them all now for your business plan ahead of time you're going to implement one at a time because I have faith in you guys. I know that you don't want to just have a business plan that you're looking at that sounds good. We want you to have a lead generation plan that will actually make it happen. And we are here for you guys all along the way. Hey, Mary asked, are the handouts free? Yes, they are. However, if you'd like to send cash, <laughs> um, <laughs> our address is no. <laughs> hey, real quick can I just say Lisa Cooper I really want to thank you for your openness and your vulnerability and sharing with us kind of yes. with us. I really appreciate that so i um, looking forward to help you guys out in any way that we can always reach out to us on our business page um, let us know what you're thinking let us know what uh, you want to learn more about because hey we're here to help you <laughs> Absolutely, guys. And again, just a reminder, if you want to follow us behind the scenes, head over to Instagram at Influential Agent and follow us there. We just want to say thank you so much for spending your time with us today. We hope you got some big value or at least the big picture idea of a lead generation plan that you can lay out for 2019 based on your personality type. Have a blessed day, you guys. Bye, guys. Have a great Bye -bye. day.